All right, welcome back everybody. So today I'm going to be showing you how you can do this particular corner painting feature that was shown off in the launch video for DaVinci Resolve 17. Now I'm just going to cut right to the chase. This is a bit of a niche feature just because it is a little bit limiting in the types of videos that you can use it on. Now I am going to explain this a little bit more as we go. So without further hesitation, let's jump right into the video. All right, so in my timeline here, you can see that I imported a stock video of a circuit board. Now I chose this one because it has a very smooth pan that's happening. And this is pretty much a requirement for doing the feature that Blackmagic showed off. So first things first, let's get some text in here. I'm just going to click and drag that right over top onto video track two. Now I'm going to change this to the font that I like, which is this one right here. And I'm going to write something like very important feature here. And I'm going to change the color just so we can see it a little bit better against the blue background. Another thing is when we actually start doing the corner pinning, the text itself is going to shrink substantially. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and then hopefully it'll fit within that box. So now what uh, DaVinci Resolve showed is basically going into the uh, effects folder here. And if you scroll all the way down, you'll find this transform feature. But if you try to click and drag that on top of the text, what you'll see is it doesn't actually work. You, you can't drop it in. So what we have to do is right click on the text and create a new compound clip. What this will allow us to do is to drag any uh, effects over top because it took the text and it created a new type of video that allows effects to be placed on top of that. So what we can do is click and drag the transform on top. And then in the top right corner, we click on effects and change the control mode from sliders to canvas. And if yours is anything like mine, nothing would happen when you did that. And that's actually correct. So what you have to do is click on this drop down and make sure you have open effects overlay selected and then turn that on. From here, we can drag and move the corners to where we want the corner pinning to be. So I'm going to move this to the inside of this square and I'm just going to make a quick video cut here and I'll come back when I'm done. Okay, perfect. So now that we have that in place, what we have to do is click on the under control options. This section right here says uh, canvas keyframe. We just have to make a keyframe at the beginning of it. And then I'm going to go to the very last frame by clicking over here at the end of the compound clip. And then I'm just going to make another keyframe here. It's going to automatically create one just by moving it. And then I'm going to drag that in place as well and move my corners to where I need them. And now that they're in place, what we should have if we play this back is motion tracking or something similar to it without actually going into the fusion tab. And it's smooth enough and it works for very basic videos such as this simple pan or if you had an image that was nearly static with only a tiny amount of movement or if you wanted to use this as something of a reference for a video editor if you wanted to put something like this in or even instructions on make sure to highlight this feature or do some motion tracking here do something like that it's an instructional piece because this takes 30 seconds whereas motion tracking would take anywhere from 5 to 30 minutes depending on what you're doing and now what i have here is I basically did this for another video track. And if I zoom in here, you can see that I was motion tracking this microwave just to see what would happen in a more complex video. And if I play this back, you can see that it's not very smooth. Now, for the circuit board, I spent maybe 30 seconds creating that. And for this microwave, 
I spent well over five minutes doing this, which is about the time it would take to motion track. And as you can see, especially if I zoom in, the results are nowhere near as good. It's the word microwave is moving about. It's never really in the center. It's always slightly off. It moves up and down. It moves left or right. You can see it going in front of the handle and it it's just not the best result. And if we look at what I actually did, I have a lot of keyframes here. I pretty much went every five to 10 frames trying to get it as smooth as I could, but it just doesn't work. So even though they were showing this off as a new feature, it's really of limited use in my opinion. And again, next week I'll show you how to actually motion track it so you can get a far cleaner result than what this would actually give you. And I know this video wasn't the most helpful, but at least I tried to make it informative. And for that, I would really appreciate if you could leave a like. And if you have any suggestions for what you'd like to see going forward, let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys all in the next video. Bye now.